So welcome to our next talk. Uh, David Kalnischniks will talk us why this app has super cow powers. So we are very curious. Give him a warm applause. <laughs> Ah, thanks. Um, ah, actually, surprised so many people are here. Um, I'm not alone here. I've actually brought Super Cow with me. Ooh, phoning. So, yeah, moo, exactly. Uh, so, the talk is called App Test Superpowers. So, why you actually see this line on the App Get Help uh, man page, which is one of the Easter eggs App has. But let's start with me, which is, yeah, me. Um, the most interesting part for Debian people is actually that I'm a deity. But, well, that's the mailing list of the uh, Debian apt team. So not the real gods, just the package manager gods. And, yeah, I do a bit of other stuff, like I'm a student and do a lot of stuff in my hometown. And, well, a thing most people are quite annoyed by is that I'm actually really annoyed by official titles and official responsibilities. So I shy away from those. And so I'm not a DD, not a DM. Well, nobody wants to come on that. That's great. So I had to invert the colors, so that's a bit messed up. But... Um, the point is here, I actually wanted to find out something about apt. And the first thing I get suggested by Google is apt-get is broken. That's great. DuckDuckGo says the same thing, apt-get is broken. Well, that's not a lot of information about apt. So, but, yeah, it's the proper thing you do as a student, right? You're searching with search engines for the answer. Um, so I tried to actually do the same with my name just to figure out if it's a common problem with the broken thing. And, well, I put it in. Surprisingly, no broken came out, but, well, I was called a German jihadist. That's <laughs> <laughs> but, well, that's an ad, so not their fault, but, well, that, that was interesting. Um, I dropped this approach then, so, well... That doesn't work. So I went to look up what people say about apt, and that's actually a pretty nice description of what apt is. 100% bug free. That's right, right? And yeah, no home intervention and everything. And yeah, sounds right, right? But it's still not telling really what apt does or not do. So we are looking again at the man page. And it says apt has super care powers. So I said that's the that's one of the Easter eggs. There are actually more. But uh, yeah, how many people in this room think that you actually know all Easter eggs in apt? That's a trick question. <laughs> Nobody actually wants to show this number. So that's the obvious one, right? Everybody knows that, but most people actually think that's all apt can do. But there's actually more cows and even more cows and even more cows. And then there is even this, which is actually better if you are looking at the right color. Uh, yeah, well, if I find it. So, well, it's blinking, right? That actually works in your command line on stable. I put it on stable. And you don't even know about that. Boys. So let's get back to the right color. Um, so that, if, that still doesn't, hasn't told us what apt is. So let's look at the really, really old days, the days before apt. That's 1997, really, the Dark Ages. So that's the official design document in version 001. So, yeah, you can say apt has a pretty standard approach to very low numbers. But, well, so the official design document said, well, 
data should be a replacement for deselect. It's still in the archive, but we are a replacement. Uh, it should be easier to use and less confusing. Hmm, I think so. And a bunch of other things. The interesting part here is actually that we are, uh, that it's still called Datey at this point. It was renamed. And it was renamed on the 1st April, which is why we are announcing great stuff always on the 1st April, so that nobody actually expects them to be real. But that's one of the great announcements. It was apt. Apt. So as I started with the history, you can, there is a lot of history, but I will skip all the boring parts of beta releases and all, all that stuff. So I skip right ahead to the stable release, which was 16 years later, uh, last year. And that was the announcement, or the start of the announcement. Uh, if you compare this, it's pretty much the same text, right? The only difference is that we announced our new version number. That was kind of great, because, yeah, we went stable. Stable app after 16 years. So the other interesting thing we announced actually in this mail, and yeah, quite a few people missed, it is that we have an apt binary now, so you don't actually need to type apt get anymore. As you saw on the, the move thing, I used always apt for it. So and at this point, I'd actually want to thank the Java maintainers to free the name because it was blocked for quite a few time, uh, for quite a while, for the uh, annotation processing tool. Yeah, you can say you can say just a few things about uh, yeah short names and name conflicts. But well, now we have this name, and now is everything good. So. As we are moving through history, that's even worse to read, but these are actually correctly colored. So that's what we have had before DevCamp, which is our back count, which if you are going by the saying that uh, if you are actually doing great stuff, you, you get criticized, we are actually really great. 1,000 open back reports. We worked on this for yeah, DebCamp and DebConf and got it a bit lower. If you want to compare this now, that's actually like three, no, more than 300 bucks down, which is in a graph. <laughs> yeah, the, no. <laughs> we closed very old bugs. I'm, I'm very happy I actually closed a uh, five number bug report 22550 actually with, a, with the comment that it was fixed in an earlier version. So I didn't all close them as, yeah, uh, doesn't, isn't reproducible, no longer applies, or stuff like that. So Julian and I really worked hard on this, and it's not. It's not all just closed. We actually fixed quite a few also. That's the yellow spot. Actually, that was 50, 50 bug reports which were pending with this, so or more actually, 60 at the end. So, yeah. We the right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As I said, I didn't do this alone. Julian Claude is yeah also responsible for this, and that's really a great thing. Which brings me to the comparison, and it's actually nice that Axel said this because I'm declaring aptitude the enemy, as <laughs> we are now actually a few bucks below aptitude. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, as you see, uh. That's the current screenshot, so I didn't even... Five bucks, five bucks. So, uh, just for comparison, um, I've actually looked up a few other things. So, VPN and VNPPP, <laughs> that's well, yeah. 
a lot of bugs that uh, that's new packages. But the others are kind of uh, very interesting, like uh, Linux with very high numbers, and which actually gets pretty uh, quickly new bug reports. And these these uh, plus numbers are really just the bug reports which are still open in the year. So there are actually more reported but handled, and these are numbers of unhandled bug reports, or, well, unhandled is a bit too much. You can actually confirm one just like that. So I was just new bug reports, which aren't closed. So aptitude and apt are probably the packages or the Debian native packages with the most open bugs. It's quite worse. The package is a bit better when we, when we are, and they are handling bugs better. So that's the point at which I want to invite everyone who wants to help uh, triage all these bugs, because that's way too many. Debian, uh, uh, Debian native packages shouldn't have so many open bug reports. That's, yeah, but, well. So... We are actually back to the wonderful quote from before because I want to talk now about a few of the features we implemented uh, in a new release we are currently calling 1.1 uh, Experimental 9, and which sits there for a while. Um, the new release happened just today at 11 o'clock, so maybe it's already on the uh, archive and you can download it. It uh, has a few changes, just a few. I counted, uh, yeah, well, the counted line numbers in the change log are in the round of uh, 250 lines, so just a few changes. But they are all fine and they are all great because the most interesting thing is or for me at least, is the new acquire system, so the download of files. And that's actually the quote about the new acquire system. Yeah, well, at least what I hope it is for the acquire system, so it's 100% bug free. Uh, well, at least I hope so. So uh, that's actually a few details about the acquire system, which, uh, yeah, I'm going to read and explain a bit. So, um, uh, yeah, sure. Um, well, ta da! Um, so, we have an apt user now, or underscore apt user now, which actually means that, uh, the, for example, the HTTP download happens not as root any longer, but as this unprivileged user, so that we are more protected against exploits actually coming from the net to us, which I think never happened uh, before, but it's better to be protected. And uh, another very important thing for us is the, that we are now checking more hash sums, which means that uh, when the file is downloaded, we check a hash sum, we uncompress it, we check a hash sum, and after that, it's used. And not as before, we, are actu we were downloading and uncompressing it after, or for some files, doing this, and for some, not. And uh, it was quite confusing, so that's actually, that was the point why we re re rewrote the uh, download of all these files. Um, there is no guessing. Now going back in time is another thing like uh, replay attacks, uh, all these nifty little technical terms. Um, Michel warned me about that, but I'm actually now trying to show you this because, well, that's a lot of text, but uh, if it works, or if all this stuff works, um, you will never see it, so I have to show you this now. Um, so I'm actually copying, I'm actually using now a, a state from last Sunday and uh, calling 
update on this. For this one, I will actually use PDFs because that's another thing I want to show you as many people still think that uh, PDFs or Air Red, as uh, it's called an app, is actually very, very slow. But yeah, I have, I think, now downloaded for a lot of, I have, or in my source list, there are four architectures and four releases. So that's a lot of files. And uh, for each of them, I have applied roughly eight patches. And it's still, um, yeah, what's the total? 23. Um, let's try this again. This time without PDFs. So that actually takes longer, hopefully <coughs> at least. As that's the presentation. So. And it took longer. Way. So we have. So what to take away from this is, and this is actually working on your stable machines already. So uh, there is no point in saying that uh, PDFs are slow and need to be disabled, stuff like that. They actually work, and they are fast. So other things I actually want to show you is that, uh, for example, this year, uh, you were told today in the briefing that you, are, that you should switch to this mirror to save bandwidth, and that's a great idea, but I was a naughty boy and didn't uh, change my source list for it. I still have the HTTP Debian.org uh, source list, but uh, apt actually shows you now which mirror was used, which is very important actually for user support, stuff like that, to actually report errors against the right mirror as, yeah, well, an error happened on HTTP Debian.net. Well, which mirror? One of, one of the hundreds, right? So that's one of the nicer things which actually works now. Um, the really important thing is all these warnings you see at the bottom, I have uh, now, or I have two archives in it, one without a release file, one with a release file, but not signed. Both of them, in the old versions, were, well, there were warnings, but not really encouraging. And uh, these are now and will get even harder uh, later on that you are really encouraged to not do this anymore because we have release file signing now for many, many years. And it's still not everywhere used. And that's really a key part of our security chain. So. We really want to yeah, press, basically, uh, people to uh, use signed repositories, finally. Um, yeah, Buki? So, <coughs> microphone, yes. So in general, I agree with you, that's great. But when bootstrapping uh, mm -hmm. locally, it's actually quite tiresome getting all the parts to have all their keys in the right places and the cheroots and the thing and the thing and I know. the thing. So still being able to do old-fashioned, I really don't care, I just made this package, I want to put it there and I want to use it again. I know, it's that's good. why I'm, yeah. Well, that's why there are options to actually allow this still. You are currently, uh, um, you are actually getting uh, the um, unauthenticated packages warning at installation of packages. You can actually mark in your sources list that this repository is trusted and apps will accept that this is a trusted repository checked by you, a lo local mirror maybe on your network or something like that. So that app says, okay, the user said it's okay, so I'm not second guessing him anymore. That's, that should work on stable also, so try this. Um, so that's really about uh, yeah, external repositories and stuff like that, which are shipping without keys or 
just really old uh, stuff which should really not be used anymore because it's really unsecure. And we have all these great security features that, well, if you have unsigned repositories, everything is broken from a security point. So um, we really want to uh, get away from these unsigned repositories in the future and uh, really press forward at this point. Um, let me look again. Um, well, there is an, yeah, I should actually mention this, um, that the second last point on the list is arbitrary additional files download. So that's a very techy name for something quite simple. There are many front ends based on apt which actually want more files to use them and have to get them somehow from the net. But uh, at the moment they have to implement this all by themselves. Hmm, okay. Um, have to implement this all by themselves. And um, that's hard. Apt file, apt file, for example, doesn't even check uh, the hash sums. So it's just downloading the contents files unchecked because, well, it's too hard and nobody will mess with them, right? So that's, that's actually the answer in a bug report. So, um, so now it's actually possible to tell apt, yeah, uh, I want you to download this and that file, which is, I want to do this securely. Well, there is no other default. You can just download them securely. And uh, apt will download these files and place them at the right point and um, the front end can use them without actually caring about the security and stuff because that's handled by apt. There's just one pint now for this. So well, let me look if I've missed. Well, okay. Um, there's another thing. Julian worked on this uh, at DebConf is that is pinning is actually working now at is, as it is advertised, which was kind of surprising that it didn't work. Um, I could fill a whole session about how pinning actually works, but uh, you just have to trust me on this point now. Hmm. Okay, everyone accepts trusting me, that's nice. Uh, no comments on that. Um, the key point is that you couldn't uh, pin two different package versions uh, differently. So that works now, and that's great. And as it's written on the page, you can actually get it from Experimental now, hopefully, anytime soon, if it doesn't, if it hasn't hit your mirror yet. So the other important or interesting thing about uh, the new experimental version, which we want, is that currently you have a wonderful one-line uh, description of your sources in the sources list, and that's this line, very long. And uh, above, there is our new format, or an additional format, we want to support because there are actually many, many options you can set on uh, report repositories now to uh, yeah, change cer certain parts, like uh, there is snapshot debian.org to get old packages. And uh, usually these are because of all the security features in apt actually, you are getting warnings, a lot of warnings if you are using old sources. So it was actually requested that uh, you can disable this uh, valid until security feature based on the source line alone as you currently need to disable it completely, which is, well, disabling it completely is breaking it. So the other thing is, which I had to mention a few times now on Debian Devil, uh, is that you can actually tell apt now that 
a key or that a repository can only be signed by a certain key or by a certain key ring. At this point, this example is maybe not the greatest idea. My GNU PG public key ring, I trust all of you guys, but mm, well, maybe not that much. But yeah, it's just an example. Uh, that can, and I ch choose this example because um, I wanted to show that this file doesn't even need to be placed in the trusted GPG uh, D directory from app. So it doesn't need to be uh, signing other uh, repositories or stuff like that. And um, this contents here above is, as I said, additional uh, downloads of other uh, files. So it can actually be configured as well for different sources. And um, yeah, I forgot to mention actually for the acquire download, um, it's, it's written on the slide, but uh, no guessing means here really that uh, currently we had for the translation files, which I mentioned here, uh, we had to support uh, a long time very different instances of this. And so we had to guess if these exist on the repository or not. And in these files are descriptions or the, 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 the translated descriptions. So they're actually important for the user that we download them if they are available. But we didn't know if they are available. Now they are or they should be in the release file and indexed and with hash sums. So um, we can actually do this now and not guess anymore about if they exist or not and display ignore line and if not and uh, so um, well I can it's actually shown here um, at, the, uh, at the top as I said I have this unsecure thing and there we have to guess all the time and these requests that's a local repository so that didn't even hurt me that much, but if it's on a server, I'm requesting from the net, basically guessing if this file exists. So that's actually fixed now. As uh, you can see here from testing, I actually got the end file. And there is another thing. What happens now is that, uh, as you see, uh, app is just trying the in-release files and figures out that these files haven't changed at all. So it doesn't even try the other files anymore, which was also quite a hit on servers if these files do not change a lot, like on stable. The repository is only updated on point releases, so it's not changed that much. And well, there are a few other very nifty things, some of which uh, Michael talked about last year already, but I will mention it here anyway, which is uh, you can actually install dep packages now with app get install and the dep package. Of course, you have to ensure that this was a secure download, right? But uh, Currently, you had to download them somehow, type in the package minus e the dep file, and then run apt get install uh, minus f, which, by the way, stands for fix broken and not for horse. <laughs> Many people uh, confuse this. That's <laughs> so that's actually a nicer interaction now. And yeah, the same for build dep which is kind of interesting. So you can get a source package downloaded and get the build dependencies installed, not from the, not from an, from the sources file or from an uploaded source file, but you can just say here in the directory, where is the Debian control file, parse it for me, install these build dependencies. <laughs> Some people are actually happy about it, right? <laughs> So, and other interesting things, but um, I will actually 
Well, I can talk a bit about these more, but I actually want to open this up now for questions, if you have any or comments or whatever. Otherwise, I will continue talking. Hi. Is it, is it on? Yes. Hi. You said you rewrote the acquire system so we can download extra files now. Yeah. Is there documentation for it for developers as well? What? Yeah, there is documentation. Actually, there is a quite long documentation for it. I just have to find it. So, um, acquire additional files. What a surprising name. Um, and, well, that's... That's a file documenting it, everything. And, well, I'm not reading it aloud now, but it's we fine. will manage, we can talk. <laughs> so that was actually the up file maintainer. <laughs> Just one minute thing, since you mentioned these translation files. There is a long outstanding issue with the, uh, so, uh, with the archives not having a release file. Uh, the Organization code expected the translation files to be named like language code dot bz2 without this translation prefix. <laughs> Are you aware of this issue? What? Um, <laughs> I don't really know. I. Okay. What do you mean? I. Um, I will show you the exact printf uh, construct later. You will see what I mean. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well. Um, okay. But I'm pretty sure this works. So <laughs> it works for me for a year now. Yeah. Uh, you showed us uh, these examples with the local f dep files, but they were called with apt get. Doesn't those subcommands exist in apt? Or it too? works in apt too. So okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was just. Um, I yeah. I'm the developer of the stuff, and I actually have to type apt quite often. So I'm still muscle memory apt get, <laughs> and still can't remember to type apt. Sorry. So um, I, d uh, I don't need a dpkg minus e anymore? No, you don't need it anymore. You can just tell apt to do the right thing. Um, well, I can actually, well, that's, that's really secure now, downloading stuff as root, but well. So apt get download, awesome. Uh, have I actually downloaded it now? Yeah. So, apt install. Yeah, well, I don't have auto completion for it. So, Ugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Muscle memory, as I said. So, so it's asking me, and uh, it has extracted the build dependencies and all that stuff, so I can just. So if I press yes now, but I don't, I have installed awesome, which is the perfect example for this. Awesome. <laughs> My next question is basically to Michael. So uh, will G Debbie vanish now? Yeah, the answer. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. We need to write bindings first. Like, it, this is not, I, I believe at least, this is not exposed yet in Python apt. Um, but we will check. It's, <coughs> it's a good point. Python apt should support it eventually. <coughs> Hello. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> the yeah. green one, please. <laughs> when I'm building a custom kernel, the Debian way. What's the difference when I install it with D package or with APT? Well, the only difference is that, uh, as I said, here, for example, uh, it's actually resolving the dependencies now. You don't have to uh, call apt uh, install f anymore after you install something with the package, which could actually fail or s suggest you that it removes the 
package you had just installed. No, if, if I'm building a custom kernel, I have hmm. uh, depth titles directly after the building. You know, it's, I'm building for uh, after the uh, kernel handbook from Debian. And so you have depth files for yeah. the kernels. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, I have only a depth file here. Uh, this, this awesome file is just a depth file. I've just downloaded it from the archive, but I could have built it myself. What, why? Well, I can, so the package install, uh, awesome. And it's installing and well, yeah, well, quite a few things broken as the package tells me. So it's not actually installed. So I have to call app get install f after this and maybe it suggests the right thing. Yeah, apt is clever. It suggests the right thing. It could actually say, uh, let me deinstall awesome because I can't resolve the dependencies now. And by telling apt that you actually want to install this deb now, it can help you with this. As, yeah, well, but if you don't want to use it, you can, of course, still use the package i. I mean, that's what apt uses. Uh, at the lower level, it's just the higher level to help you. Yeah. Uh, my question is, if I mm, have a download um, package with dependencies and I have uh, some of these dependencies uh, also downloaded, will apt look into the um, um, a download uh, um, a directory whether he found the dependencies there? No, it will not look in your directory because, well, it can't, it can't know, but you can, uh, you can specify multiple depths on the command line. So um, if you want to resolve your dependencies manually, you can do. <laughs> Is there also an interface so I can say, give it a dependency string and it will satisfy that? Uh, currently not. There is a open bug report for it, yeah, I guess. Do, please so. do that as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Otherwise, it's just, great. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. What, what did I say? 700 open bugs. So we are actually exacting patches. We are not working on this alone. <laughs> Community. Um, so, yeah, sure. But there are a lot of wishes and we, are, we want to satisfy all of them, but yeah, there's a finite amount of time. But yeah, satisfying dependency lines is a good idea and should be implemented. <laughs> so anyone else? Well, then I'm showing a list of contributors while you're thinking about asking another question or not. Um, because, as I said, we are not working not alone on this. Um, quite a few people contributed to this over the last 17 years. Uh, some of them are hidden in this uh, conversion uh, name, that f uh, especially older authors like uh, Jason Gantrop. But uh, as you see, there are quite a few uh, people mentioned on that list, and uh, it goes on for a while. So, as I said, it's a community working on this. We are not working on this alone. And um, yeah, if nobody wants to actually ask another question, I can actually tell you uh, shortly my story, how I got into apt. It was uh, in 2009, I was relatively new to Debian and uh, all of this and my laptop didn't support or had a very new uh, card for uh, Wi-Fi and uh, stable didn't support it so I tried unstable and did, I, did this worked so I stuck with it but um, I found a few or well there was a very 
very small thingy about uh, apt which annoyed me as an unstable user. So um, I thought, so um, I didn't, well, I, I was new to this whole open source thing, so I thought, well, I can try, right? Uh, I, can, I can write a patch, what could possibly go wrong? And um, I posted this on the bug tracker, or, well, I found a bug report about this, and I posted it in the bug tracker, and uh, I thought, well, I'm, I, I'm just, I, I, was, I was a student, fresh student, and these are, yeah, well, dates, the mailing list, right? So um, that's probably not going to be accepted, right? And, uh, well, it was accepted, and uh, Michael Vogt, the first one on this list, and still working on apt for quite a while now, um, he mailed me and said, well, yeah, that's, the, that's a nice patch, and, well, we, sh we should talk, and, well, yeah, we talked, <laughs> we talked, and, um, well, he, he pulled me into this, basically, and then I, yeah, was a bit hooked, so I gave him the, the small finger, as you know, and, well, in 2010, I was a Google Summer of Code student in Apt and implemented multi-architecture multi in Apt. That was the project name. <laughs> and um, the point is, at that point, I couldn't. Yeah, I was completely involved. So yeah, as I said, I gave him the small finger, and he took the whole arm and the rest of me with. And uh, yeah, now I'm completely in it and uh, can't leave anymore, and, and I don't want to, but I want to encourage more people to actually uh, work on this ads. It's not that hard as it sounds, and you, come, you can become a deity. Yeah, another question. Not, not really a question. Oh. Debian has a severe short, a shortage of people working on core infrastructure, and I wanted to thank you that you are one of the few people doing this, actually. Very, thank you very much. Thanks. 